All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is see how we can use the lathe, uh, lathe generator even, to make a wine glass. And this technique can be used for a variety of other types of objects as well, which we'll talk more about later. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so here's going to be the finished result here. Um, ultimately, what I'm going to do is kind of just delete this and start over. Um, I'm going to start by creating a plane. Really, this kind of setup is how I would start modeling pretty much anything. I'm going to take the plane and reduce its segments down as low as possible and rotate this up 90 degrees, which I didn't do before, but I did run into issues. This is great. Uh, now, I do already have my image loaded into a material. I do want to point out here that whenever I'm loading an image onto a material for modeling purposes, I switch the texture preview size from default to no scaling. And that really can make a big difference in terms of just how clear um, something looks on here. Let's see if we can actually see that. It's a little bit distorted. We'll take care of that here. Um, but you can see how uh, with this default, just you know how pixelated, how low resolution this is. But you can switch this to no scaling, and this looks a lot better. So that is a really nice uh, tip if you've ever had to model something. Um, and you wondered why the image looked so bad. The other thing I did in here, and this is just a standard material, is I unchecked reflectance just so we, you don't get any of that reflectivity or specular um, as we're modeling this. Now, um, to get this the right size, I'm going to go into the color section where I loaded this image and I can see its resolution there. And so I will go to my plane and type in those values. So 1608, 2856. Uh, and this is going to make this image really, really large. I just created a normal cube. You can see how big it is. Uh, so I'm going to take this plane and scale it way down. And honestly, I should probably be modeling this to scale. Um, 200 centimeters uh, is much, much larger than a wine glass. You know, even if we are, are generous and say a wine glass is 10 inches tall, um, that's you know how how small we should be making this. So we are not modeling something to scale. Uh, but we're at least kind of sort of in the ballpark. You may be asking yourself, why are we even modeling a wine glass? And that's because there might be a situation where you just can't find the exact wine glass or something similar um, that you know you need to have. You know, a client sends you a picture of it, and you're like, this is the exact you know product, object, or whatever we need. If you can't find it um, online, then you either need to make it from scratch or find one online that you can modify. And half the models online, though it is getting better aren't always very good and are hard to change and, and you know turn into what you want. So knowing how to make something like this from scratch can often be quite a bit uh, faster, uh, if not easier. And, you know, really, by the time I go online, find a model, download it, maybe even pay for it, I could be pretty much done with this entire process. Uh, so we've scaled down our image here. What I'm going to do is pull it back just a little bit on... Um, actually the z-axis uh, before adding a protection tag to it. And that way I can't, in theory, oops, not restriction, protection tag is under re rendering. Um, I can't move this. Right? So I won't accidentally click on it, move it as we go to model this. Now I'm going to go into um, a front view. Here we are. Oops. And switch my display mode to shading so we can see this. And I'm going to use my pen tool. Now, um, I have a little bit of a different approach to using this pen tool um, than perhaps you've seen. That is, I don't worry about um, making this uh, round as I go. And I'm actually going to start, let's see, I can't remember, um, on the middle right here. So we'll do this, and I'm just trying to trace the contour, okay? I'm going to add the thickness. I have that extra other point that could be problematic. I'm trying to put those two points next to each other, but I'm just, you know, placing these points where I think I'm going to need them. And down here is a little bit tricky because there's some perspective, so I can't see the exact shape. Um, so I'm just going to take a guess. Uh, and something like that will work pretty well. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do, you know, make sure as best I can everything looks good, its position. This kind of the angle as well. You know, toward, actually, let's get rid of that point. Maybe, maybe up a little bit higher. Um, and I took this picture myself and I tried to take it, you know, straight on. Um, didn't do the most amazing job, but you know, we can always 
um, adjust that later. I can see this is okay, but this I need another point there. So I'll use line cut and this can go right here. And this process goes a little bit quicker because, um, you know, I haven't converted these to soft interpolation yet. Another thing I'm going to do before I do that is make sure everything that's planar or flat that should be. So these should be flat. So I'll select both of them, open up my attribute manager. I just have the spline selected and then whatever axis this is on, right? It is the Y. Make sure that there is zero difference between those. And I'll do the same thing for these because um, the middle of this object is where that lathe is going to happen. And so we want these to be straight. We also need to keep an eye on where that middle is, how good of a job we do centering it. But we can fix all that after if we need to. So now what I'm going to do, select all my points right click and choose soft interpolation. And you can see I got pretty close, not perfect. Um, and I like to do it this way, you know, because I have a pretty good understanding of where these points go. I just let Cinema 4D handle the way these hand, uh, handle the way these handles should be. Uh, but if I do need to come in here, I can work with them myself. Make sure you're in your move tool when it comes to working with these handles, even though it can look like others. That looks okay here. And just adjust these as I see fit. I don't necessarily want it to be or need it to be perfect for this example, but you know, hopefully you get the idea. Maybe something like that. This, you know, is a little bit tricky to see. Like I said, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And now what I can do is come over here to my generators and choose my late. Now, the way the lathe works is you want it positioned in the middle or where the lathe is actually going to happen. Okay, so really, we want this to be in the very middle of this wine glass. It looks like we got pretty close. I really want it to be lined up with that point. Um, I could snap it there, but I, I think we'll be um, fine for right now. And I also want to point out I modeled the thickness here. That's why it's thin. Um, wasn't necessarily intentional, but it gets thicker. And I just kind of left this here because it will make the rest of this solid, as we'll see. And once we have the lathe positioned kind of in the middle of where we want um, our object to be created or in the middle of our, our object, I'll place my spline inside. And just like that, there we go. Um, and we can see this looks pretty good. You know, it's not quite perfect. Maybe I pull. Um, the points here out just a little bit and so we can visualize it a little bit better really going to select all the points but middle i could come in and pull this out that's going to make this all thicker i could just say you know maybe it's just the position of this center it that gives me a little bit better idea of where i may need to make some adjustments to pull things out a little bit but honestly not too bad so let's take a look at the lathe itself and see some of the settings there in the object tab, uh, you have an angle property. So hide the plane. You can kind of trace this out, have it grow out like this. Nice way to kind of build this on. Okay. Subdivisions gives us more polygons going around. If we want more polygons or edges vertically, that happens in our spline and the intermediate point type. So if you want to use adaptive, great, turn the angle down. Um, I'm personally a little bit bigger fan of natural as it can help in some of these places where uh, you can end up with a lot of polygons or edges uh, really close to an area that doesn't, that can affect, you know, the way things look. If I set this back to, where was it? Uh, adaptive, you know, notice how we get that, that little bit of a line there uh, where we don't with natural. Now we don't have quite as many polygons, but really, you know, how close are we going to be to this? Um, so maybe I would go just a bit higher. So we'll start to get kind of back where we were, but still not quite, not quite there. Okay. Uh, we also have movement. So if you want to make one side higher than the other, you can do that. And then also scale down that side. So you almost end up with a really kind of abstract um, piece of geometry here. Caps really won't work because of the way we created this object, but in theory, we do have a way to control caps. 
You can see they're not showing up just because of, like I said, the way we created it. Let's get rid of that movement though. Um, and then we also have selections. Should you want to break out any of those? But once again, you know, because of the way we created this, um, that won't really be a problem. Another thing to keep in mind with these is the very middle of these objects. So right where the, the lathe is happening from, you know, we have some issues with our normals there and probably on the bottom as well. Um, and that's where selecting these points, just this point, just kind of moving it, right, can fix that. So you can see if I don't have things close to the middle, right, like we had before, if I have too much of a gap here, uh, we end up with a hole. And that's not going to be any good. So we can pull this. This is where it does help to have our lines turned back on. You can see it, and eventually we should see it kind of snap, right? So it's almost like it wants to keep just a little bit of a hole. Just better off. And I wonder if there I don't have a flip normals option. Nothing about kind of welding where these points meet. Um, so maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea to have that little hole or to make it editable um, you know, as well. The other thing is I didn't check to make sure this was 100% uh, centered to the um, lathe. And really, it should be centered to the y-axis. So why don't we try that? See if that doesn't get rid of this. Um, so y, or actually, it's x position. So zero that out. Zero this out. So, oh, you can see it's not quite right because it's in the lathe. So I'm, maybe we'll just eyeball it. Not sure why that wasn't working, but also don't feel like figuring it out right now. That seems to be good. Make sure the lathe is zeroed out there, and it is. Don't think this will get rid of it completely. In fact, quite the opposite. Interesting. But yeah, that's it. Showing you guys how we can fix this. So if it takes a little bit of me just moving this over, so be it. Then do it for kind of the middle, middle, but the inside part here as well. Find that point and do the same thing. All right. And there you have it. The custom made wine glass that we can now use wherever we want. And like I said, look, wine glasses are pretty common to find online, but if you need to make something unique, um, this is how you would do it. And also just a great um, uh, understanding to have of the lathe to be able to create things like this or even modify them. Because really quickly, I could take this wine glass and change it to a champagne flute or something like that. So that will do it for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see and take care.